Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight on our news. The Prime Minister drops hints about the upcoming election. That story straight ahead. Kirsty responds to Minister's comments that he would resell Bahama. That story is coming up tonight straight ahead. The Marco City MP reveals he's leaving politics and his party behind. Plus, why one PLP MP says Dr. Hubert Minnis won't last as leader with Brent Simonet around. Our news is brought to you by Alive, the nation's newest and best LTE network. Good to be alive. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina McNeil. Topping news tonight, after declaring that voters should be frightened by the thought of Dr. Hubert Minnis as Prime Minister, Prime Minister Perry Christie was on the attack again last night, telling supporters at a Progressive Liberal Party joint branch meeting that the FNM leader has not earned his respect. Christie says Minnis's ill-advised threat to execute a real sale of Bahamar is nothing short of ridiculous. Giorgio Bain reports. Leader of the Progressive Liberal Party, Prime Minister Perry Christie, says leader of the Free National Movement, Dr. Hubert Minnis, has a long way to go in terms of earning his respect, especially after comments that he would resell Bahamar. While speaking at a joint PLP branch meeting for the Golden Gates, Garden Hills and Tall Pines constituencies at Essie McPherson Junior High School last night, Christie said after seeing the free national movement under the leadership of former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram, he wonders what the faith of the country would be under Minnis, who has yet to earn his respect. I fought an election back and forth with a leader called Hubert Ingram. He earned my respect. I want my counterpart in the FNM now today to earn my respect and to earn the respect of the people at large of this country. To be able to man up to the weaknesses and to acknowledge his weaknesses. And I'm not talking about just personal weaknesses. I'm talking about the weaknesses of his organization. Christie was responding to those widely panned comments by Minnis that an FNM government would execute a real sale of Bahamar to a purchaser who believes in Bahamians. He says he wants to be a leader, but he's rooting against Bahamians. He's rooting against Bahamian success. He's hoping that something that is very big and important to Many Bahamian families will succeed, will fail. Christie said he was amazed that Minnis would have the gall to even mention reselling Bahamar, given all the work his government has pumped into getting the resort open. Christie said what was even more shocking was that when Minnis called for backup from his party chairman on the resale comments, he was left standing alone. The leader of the opposition is saying he would stop, cancel, and sell Bahamar. But the government of the Bahamas cannot sell something they do not own. He tried to have his party chairman step it back, but it was too late. The damage was done. Christie even took a jab at Minnis, whose own parliamentary team called him a failed leader whom they had no confidence in right before they oust him as the leader of the official opposition. You can't tell me that the FAM is ready to govern this country. Not when they voted no confidence in their own leader just a few weeks ago. You see, because all of them still say the FAM and they voted out Hubert Minnis as their leader. Yes. They know that. I can't ever remember it, that happening in the history of this country. Yes. That's, that's their truth. Christie also lashed Minnis, who has posted several statements on social media in recent months. Yeah, candidates who are ratified and unratified. And maybe he feels face, Facebook is a good place for him to hide. 
In his excitement to address the crowd last night, Christie almost missed the stage. Reporting for our news, I'm Giorgio Bain. Well, Tall Pines MP Leslie Miller also addressed that PLP meeting last night, noting that with the Free National Movement's ratification of former Deputy Prime Minister Brent Simonet and businessman Dionisio Diaguilar, he does not see Dr. Hubert Minnis holding on to his position as leader much longer. Minnis says Simonet's ratification speaks volumes of Minnis' ability to make good political decisions. I say, do you believe? that with fellas like Simnet and the rest of our crew coming in there and dog couldn't survive Loretta Butler Turner. You think she could survive that crew? Wait a minute, wait a minute. No, because if you elect a leader and he can't sustain Butler, how we can deal with Simnet and the brother from the wash house and the other brothers? Six months is all Miller says remains of Minnis' reign as FNM leader, and he assured Bahamians that the PLP is the only unified party. Within six months, he'll be out of there. Bite him, Leslie, bite him. I know it, it's, important, it's important to think on these things. Because you got to think when you go in those booths, who you got to vote for. With the PLP, you have a government that is entrenched, that is consistent, that is together. We have, we have good problems in, in our party yes. from time to time, yes. but we are a solid group of men and women yes. who are dedicated to the cause of our country. Meanwhile, more than a year after announcing his leadership of the newly formed United Democratic Party, Marco City MP Greg Moss has announced he's leaving politics and his party behind. The former PLP MP said in a statement, With immediate effect, I am suspending my involvement in the national election process of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas in order to fully commit myself to my family and my business and professional obligations. He added, As a result, I have resigned as leader of the United Democratic Party and will not be offering myself for re-election to the House of Assembly during the 2017 general election. Moss also hinted that the UDP might be considering joining forces with another political party. The attorney formed the UDP in November 2015, months after he resigned from the PLP. And amid ongoing calls for him to set an election date, Prime Minister Perry Christie says there will be signs pointing to when he will ring the bell. Here's Jasmine Brown. While the Prime Minister acknowledged that many are anxious for that election date, he says they'll just have to watch and wait. In the coming days and weeks, there will be signs. Right? There will be decisions made that will amount to indications of what is happening and that the time is drawing nigh. Over the past two and a half months, both FNM leader Dr. Hubert Minnis and DNA leader Branwell McCartney have called for Christie to ring the bell. In late January, when voter registration stood at just over 80,000 people, Christie indicated the numbers were too low to set an election date. Today, those numbers have surpassed 130,000, something Christie says is a positive sign. As for what those signs are, Christie explained. When people see me hit those streets, which will be very shortly, meaning spending hours walking, then they know. They, they should know then. With the Prime Minister insisting the time is drawing closer than ever, he encouraged residents to register. I would say again to people, you know, you don't have to wait on a sign for me to go and get registered. The last general election was held on May 7, 2012. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Prime Minister Christie also weighed in on a clash between FNM and PLP supporters in Golden Isles earlier this week. Even though I may say things about ministers as to his unfitness to govern, and he says the same thing to me, at the end of the day there has to be a degree of understanding, okay, that we must not take our supporters to a point where they are unable to reason or even understand what we're doing. 
A walkabout in the Golden Isles constituency quickly got heated on Tuesday after FNM and PLP supporters crossed paths. Video surfaced of both sides verbally attacking each other, shouting insults and obscenities. Christie says he's had at least one issue in his own constituency. Then I got a call today saying someone drove past my constituency headquarters and said the FNM was in the yard next door giving out um, pamphlets. Now, that's, that's inv inviting people who support me to say, why would you come right here to do that? But Christie says it is important for everyone campaigning to do what it takes to avoid confrontation. We have to, at all costs, right, um, avoid any kind of confrontation that, that I think is sort of driven by anger and division. At all costs, we must avoid that. We must therefore try our best to go the opposite way, try our best not to have our supporters confront each other. Um, we, we don't need further demonstrations of how difficult it is for conflict resolution here in our country. And a divided opposition may give the governing Progressive Liberal Party the edge it needs to win the next general election, according to former PLP MP Philip Galanis. He says the next few weeks should be extremely interesting as a very uncertain electorate prepares to head to the polls. The, the Progressive Liberal Party is, more, as a, is a far more organized party than the fractured opposition. Galanis says while that may not be the best reason to support the governing party, it is a good reason and one that will cause the Bahamian people to ask what they really want for the country over the next five years. The question really is, at the end of the day, are sufficient people disaffected and disenchanted, disillusioned and disappointed with the government uh, to say, well, you know something, even though the opposition is fractured, we're going to give the other guys a chance? Or are people going to say at the end of the day, uh, it makes more sense to stick with a known quantity with all of its shortcomings and deficiencies and to continue to and give them another opportunity to once again be elected. However, Galanis notes that other dynamics could make the race too close to call. Say, for instance, if the opposition became a force unified to unseat the governing PLP. I think they would be have a far, far better chance of of booting the current government out of office. I think, though, that there's so much uncertainty, and, and there is currently in the air, whether it's here or Europe, the Caribbean or the United States, there's in the air a level of uncertainty, a degree of uncertainty. A little later, we'll tell you how Galanis is sharing his political, social, and economic insight with generations of Bahamians. So to come on our news, firefighters battle a blaze deep in bushes off Carmichael. This as Nima warns Jubilee Gardens residents not to return to their homes just yet. That's coming up when our news returns.